Hello and welcome, Christian. Nice to have you. Great to talk to you, Claudia. Always Thank you for taking. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time. Christian, you are a former partner at Freshfields. You now work as an independent lawyer. You're one of the most famous, I'd like to say, mediators in, in Europe from everything I keep hearing. But now you're also, you've co-founded two new companies. You work a lot in the space of innovation, in AI, loads of things going on. Do you want to give us a bit of background about what you're doing at the moment and what are the current negotiations, negotiation challenges that you're facing in your work at the moment? Yeah, so uh, despite all the other activities, I continue to act as a lawyer as well. And I co-founded with a former colleague of uh, Freshfields Brookhaus Deringer, a law firm which is called We29. And as you already indicated, we focus on innovation and impact. So we represent um, investors with respect to um, improving sustainability in corporate business. And we also work on AI and the emerging legal framework for AI, in addition to our traditional assignments in dispute resolution. And currently, um, a part of my negotiations actually takes place in a somewhat different and yet neutral role. So I'm not acting as an arbitrator or as a mediator currently, but as an administrator or executor of an estate. And in this capability um, for a transitory period of time, you're acting as a trustee for the deceased individual and also for the beneficiaries whom she um, has um, granted something in her last will. So what are what kind of negotiations would that bring with it? What are, <laughs> I'm, I'm so, understanding this is uh, a big, this is a quite big scenario that's time filling at the moment. Yeah, so you're acting in various capabilities. So for example, part of the estate is some real estate. So um, obviously as a landlord now, you get all kinds of requests um, due to the corona um, context um, from tenants who ask you whether it would be possible to suspend paying the rent for a certain period of time or whether it would be possible even to provide for some reductions. And um, that's something you have to communicate about and also to um, establish some principles which you can apply towards all the tenants to, to the extent possible. Or another example would be um, to, um, so there's a, the, the air is the foundation and there's a, a kind of supervisory board and it's looking at the priority and funding priorities. And of course the goals in this context also have to be clarified in order to, um, determine the priorities for the funding, to what extent do you want to um, move towards more current needs given the environment we find ourselves in, and to what extent do you, do you want to stick closer, for example, to the traditional funding priorities. Mm. So these negotiations would always be complex and would always be challenging, but right now make the uncertainty that's surrounding us is making it even more difficult do you have any recommendations of how to how to go about negotiations in this current environment for people who are negotiating in these unprecedented surroundings of not knowing where will the world be in half a year from now? How would you go about it? How would you prepare for it? How would you approach it? Are there any negotiation tips that you have from from the work that you do? Yeah, so I think, um, I mean, negotiations usually is about uncertainty, as you suggest, absolutely. And in this period of time, I think it's all about contingency planning and about um, negotiating um, flexibly, um, negotiating for a certain period of time, some kind of approach, and then see how ever the situation will look like in, I don't know, two months, three months, maybe only a couple of weeks, or maybe a somewhat longer period of time, and then to reconsider the approach and to adjust the approach to remain flexible. I think today is more than ever about flexibility. 
contingency planning certainly is a very good advice there I'm thinking about what we'll, we'll all have different expectations now of what will be happening and one of the ways to create value in any contract is taking care of these um, on the because you were mentioning that you work a lot also in the innovation field and dealing with ei legal tech a bit of these things are there any yes. other, what are some of the what are some of the things that are going on right now in, in that field in terms of new negotiations, maybe challenging things that come, came along with this current situation? Yeah, I think predictive analytics is um, absolutely key and advancing very quickly also in decision-making contexts. Um, so for example, in basketball, um, I think they are making a huge progress to use also algorithms um, in order to accelerate um, the decision making and to um, do that by using all the images, but not having only the human eye look at it, but um, have uh, also, but also using the technologies in order to get to an evaluation and an outcome much faster. And in the same way as um, this is happening in sports, you can see it also in many, many other contexts. Mm -hmm. Like, you mean Moneyball, like in the movie? Yeah, absolutely. So I think eventually, you know, we will get to a point where all the case law that is already existing and all the literature that is already existing will be digested in a way that it's much faster available like uh, in the context of today's risk analysis or decision pre-analysis um, as an assisting tool in negotiating or resolving disputes in the same way as many other data are available and can be used real time for decision making purposes. Mm. And it will still be for most of the decisions us who take the decisions, but a lot of the evaluation that is necessary to, to take the decisions will um, be prepared for us by these wonderful tools. Mm. So it will make our preparation and our decision making much easier because we have a much broader foundation on which to base that on. I think so. And I think the decision making will be much more precise. There will be a lot of discussion as to whether the selection criteria are accurate and how they can be monitored and how they can be improved. I think we will see huge advances in terms of third party auditing. Um, explainable AI is one of the huge trends, which will also be very helpful in our commercial and legal context. And that will change the world quite, quite significantly, I think. Explainable AI? What is that mean? Explainable AI, one of the challenges, as you know, is that there is a black box um, behind all this intelligence. So um, AI can deal with more complexity, more data, um, and more speed than either of us. So mm -hmm. how do you know at the end of the day, um, what kind of system are you confronting? You can't because you cannot review the data in the same way as you could review a file. And so the question is, mm. what kind of transparency, mm. what kinds of explanations can you generate? And that's one of the ideas mm. behind, behind the explainable AI approach. And you will obviously also need some algorithms to check the algorithms, mm -hmm. but you can do that in a kind of third party in a kind of auditing um, process. There are some interesting startups which um, have already implemented this idea into business practices. And I think that will evolve much faster also in the context of the emerging regulatory AI framework. Because mm -hmm. it's really about also the, the responsibility of the foundation of these informations that we're using in various scenarios, who's going to double check and how transparent do we need to be and can we be about where this data is coming from? How can we rely on it? Who is responsible if it goes wrong? That's yes, absolutely. Important. So the, the key term here is it's about trustworthy AI. And if you are interested in it, you can actually probably in two weeks from now 
check the website of re 29 Tech, and you will find an online questionnaire there in order to check um, to what extent you as a business or somebody who uses AI is already in compliance with the emerging regulatory framework. Oh, fantastic. I'll link that in the comments for everyone who's interested. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Yes. That's still good. That's it's the silver. Free, it's, it's free, free as free. well. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. one of the big silver linings we have in these crises, in this crisis that so many things are being pushed forward, especially on the technology front. Thank you so much, Christian, Absolutely. for taking the time and sharing. Thank you, Claudia. Stay safe. All the best. Pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. You, you too.